When the coronavirus outbreak shut down cities, Australia's biggest life coaching school, the Coaching Institute adapted all its life coaching training courses for the next six months to be based completely online. To tell us more, we're joined live by the founder and CEO of the Coaching Institute, Sharon Pearson. Sharon, thank you for your time. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? Yes, very, very well, thank you. I see a lot of books in the background there, so I know we're talking to the right person. Um, how did the Coaching Institute <laughs> adapt to the sudden imperative of, of going fully online? Because it must be quite a, a challenge to take everything you know and to put it online or to make videos about it. What was going online? What did it actually entail for you? What we thought about first, thanks for having me firstly. What we thought about first was what's going to matter the most if this is going to be for a very long time. So our approach has been rather than a temporary band-aid approach to the business, we act as if this is permanent and at least two years. Now, very hopefully it's not, but if we the approach, this is going to how it's going to be forever. What do we need to change about how business practices in a permanent, sustainable and scalable way? So it took us five days to get fully online. We are a, an events company that runs two events every week. And 100% of our events were online by that weekend. It was massive in terms of technology, phenomenal team effort. But yeah. really it was about communicating to our community that they could still be part of this. And yeah. I think the biggest pivot we did was taking care of our community. So yeah. technology and logistics had to be done, but making sure our community were part of the journey with us still and understood that we were still as accessible that's really been the main communication and just us going live every single day to them yeah. showing that we're still here even though there's a physical distance now yes well i'd imagine they often say necessity is the mother of all invention and it certainly sounds like it was yes. in your case that one week turnaround from being uh, able to meet face to face with people to suddenly everything having to go online talk to us about the personal toll that took on you the, the fear of dread because a lot of businesses and business owners who have been going so well and building up and everything's fine suddenly a light switch flicked and it was game over for so many that for yeah. some has turned into a fight or flight mentality is that what happened for you no and i sometimes feel a bit guilty that we've managed and still kept the business very very strong because i understand so many businesses are doing so tough we took the approach that what's going to matter the most during this time where people are doing it tough but we provide such an amazing community and support for our students so instead of profits we started um, focusing on humanity so the focus hasn't been on us we're not thinking about us in this my husband and i aren't thinking about how we're doing we move from profits to humanity and every decision has to be made now until we're through this from the perspective of what can we do that will contribute in a positive way to our community in a way that will touch their lives, support them and help them. So the pivot beyond online has meant we close down access. No, no, nobody else can now come into our biggest program because we decided we had 500 members there. And if we kept selling into that program, which people wanted to come into, we didn't know if we could supply the level of support we wanted. So that was our first decision to close down our biggest profit center and to start taking care of the people we had in the program. The second thing we did was, well, what can we do that makes a real difference in a way that perhaps no one's expecting, but we know we're going to be competent at. So we moved into importing hand sanitizer for our community, which is a quarter of a million people around the world. Wow. So we are providing hand sanitizer at cost to anybody who's part of our community around the world. We ask them to cover postage and the cost of it, but that's what we're doing. So we, that was something within our skill base that we could do. So that led to us being massively in the hand sanitizer business. So the, yeah. each new pivot, if we come from humanity and what we can do to touch people's lives in a, possible, in a positive way is leading to even more decisions. And now we're in the importation business of hand sanitizer and masks and gowns and a whole bunch of things simply because we made that first decision, that first pivot. Don't put the profits first, put what can we do in a positive way first. And as a result of that, we're doing really well and not really focused on us. Yeah, very much so. Why did you start Coach Your Neighbor? What's the response been there? Coach Your Neighbor was again making the decision. We have many coaches charging for their coaching. We decide what would be the humane thing to do and that's to supply thousands of coaches for free. And our entire community has got past it, uh, got behind it. We created a group called Coach Your Neighbor. Anybody in the world can join that and receive free coaching for as long as they want support during this entire 
change that we're going through around the world. And they can join in, they can get coached, they can be part of that community. There's no charge for it. It's just our way and our wonderful community's way of making a difference. So Coach and Neighbor Again was what's the humane thing that we can do that we're great at and we can do now. And that all yeah. happened in five days. Everything I've just shared was five <laughs> days. <laughs> I can tell, I can tell. How much sleep are you getting at the moment? <laughs> well, fortunately, our team's phenomenal. So the Coaching Institute team is just a powerhouse in getting this done. Just the energy they brought to it, the commitment they brought to it, and the adaptability, because we've moved completely, as you can imagine, to Zoom, online management, online KPIs. Everything has to be online. The entire team is working from around Australia. So everybody's flexibility has really been key in this. I don't know any business that can adapt right now if they don't have a mindset that what was yesterday is not what we're trying to get back to. It's what are we trying to move to? So we're treating this as permanent and we're encouraging our team to see this as permanent and that this is how business is going to be done. That's a really interesting point, isn't it? That what you're doing right now, we're hearing and we often talk about how behaviours will change because of this, but you're in that exact situation. You are encouraging your team to know that we're not going back to how we used to go. This is how it is. This is the moment. Yeah. So we were a very and are a very large events company. To make that decision was very easy for us because there are so many ways we've realized within that five day period, we can reach more people around the world if we're online. We can make more of a difference. We're very fortunate we have the technology that if we go live, it's not just for Zoom, we can do it as, a t as TV production. So we can cut to different scenes. We can cut to live coaching demonstrations. Our students can be fully involved in interacting with what's going on because the technology we have, which I guess came before this, but because of that, it's enabling us to touch more lives, which got us thinking, well, if we can touch more lives this way, how do we make it more permanent? And if we make it more permanent, what does that mean we need to do for our students? And so in a very short period of time, new decisions could get made for this to be, we're not looking for things to get back to normal for our business. We're looking for this to be the new normal. And from this, we're hoping there'll be more innovations as we keep thinking about it. Yeah, and what do you think about the idea of, and what do people need to know to try and thrive and not just survive as well? Because for a lot of businesses, when I ask them, how are you doing? They say, oh, we're just getting through. We're just getting through. We're not making a profit. We're not losing any money either. We're just getting through. Do you think that's the right mentality, just get through? Or do you think that people could be aiming a little bit higher? I appreciate getting through. It's And there are some businesses that are just getting smashed during this time. And if you're in probably, for example, fashion retail, that's gonna, there are many businesses where our opportunities and the, what we have as opportunities just aren't available. I wouldn't have a get through attitude, but that's just me. And I don't really have advice for someone else, but my attitude is we are gonna get through this. One way or another, this will end. I wanna be able to look back on this knowing that I'm proud of myself and how I conducted myself, that I made a positive difference, that I lived my values, that I face the challenge in a way that I believe best represents me. So our hashtag is um, hashtag stronger together and living that. I wanna come out the other side looking back, knowing that I helped people know that we're stronger together. So the way, I, and again, I don't have advice for others, but for us, we're going to get through this. Yeah. How we get through this in terms of our values and living our purpose and finding innovative ways to adapt to what's going on that is inevitable and impacting everybody. Yeah. They're the choices we have have so mm. into e-commerce right now is the absolute must of every business e-commerce but must be there must have a presence must learn it must take responsibility for yes. getting online and finding ways to deliver there is just no excuse not to right now it is yes. free to get online for nearly every aspect of it linkedin we are doing massive business in linkedin yeah. go to source by sell we're getting 30 inquiries a day that's our import business so getting to e-commerce, understanding that delivery is the future, getting your packaging and logistics in order behind the scenes, yeah. getting a presence online that has a brand beyond logistics. Yes. They're the things we can do beyond getting through. All right, Sharon, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you.